When it comes to the uh, sympathomimetics, uh, the structures have three parts. Um, we have the phenyl ring, which is part one, then the blue circle, which is the ethylene linkage, then we have the amide. Uh, let's discuss this ring first. Now, the direct acting uh, adrenergic drugs contain hydroxyl groups, uh, the meta and the para. And uh, as you guys see here, uh, meta and para, we have hydroxy groups. All right. Um, so this is what we have in the direct acting adrenergic drugs. Okay. Now, if I replace the catechol by uh, a structure called the resonacol. So what is a catechol? A catechol is basically an aromatic ring has one and two OHs. If I take this out and I give them this structure instead, okay, what's going to happen? The selectivity to beta 2 is going to increase and the uh, metabolism of the Compt enzyme, if you guys remember the Compt enzyme, the CO, M T it will decrease. Okay, the COMT is the catechol or methyl transferase. So if I take this catechol out, this is gonna make it uh it's gonna reduce the possibility of the metabolism by the COMT. Alright, and that's why removing the catechol and changing it to something such as the uh the resovernicol will make this product resistant. So this product, if if uh, if you get a question, it shows you um, like epinephrine, norepinephrine, and terpurpurine in uh, like a fourth structure, and tells you which one of those are more resistant for the Compt enzyme. It's gonna be the terpurpurine. So everything that has uh, catechol, you don't want it. It's not going to be the right answer. All the catechols are going to be uh, susceptible for the Compt enzyme uh, hydrolysis or the de uh, degradation. So, again, take a look at epinephrine, terpurpurine. You will find that the epinephrine is an agonist at alpha 1, alpha 2, beta 1, beta 2. The terpurpurine is selective beta 2 agonist. Okay? So, uh, the preference is usually alpha 1 and alpha 2 and beta 1. Beta 1 and beta 2. Then the terpoputylene is what? The terpoputylene is beta 2. Why? Okay. So what made the difference between those two? It's the switch of the catechol to uh, a resorbicanol. Now the replacement of the metahydroxyl of the catechol increases the beta-2 selectivity. Okay, and this is what we got uh, in the uh, in the previous uh, example. So. Yeah, if you want to replace the metahydroxyl of the catechol, it is going to increase the beta 2 X selectivity and it's going to decrease the metabolism by the COMT or the COMT. Uh, take a look at the epinephrine and compare it with the sal uh, salpumidol. The addition of the CH2 group before the OH it what makes the salpumidol selective beta 2 agonist. And whenever we decrease the metabolism of the COMT or the COMP, this will increase the duration of action. The reason why C, uh, the COMT, the enzyme, doesn't work because it's gonna, it usually carries the reaction at the meta-hydroxy group. So if you take the meta-hydroxy group out, it's not going to work. And that's why it's not going to be able to degrade the, cell, uh, the salbutamol or the terpurpurine.
Now, the the removal of the hydroxy at the para position uh, will make the molecule selective for the alpha adrogenic receptor, such as the phenylephrine. Okay. So look at the phenylephrine and look at the epinephrine. What is the difference between them? Uh, that there is no OH at the power position, and that's makes that's what makes the phenylephrine uh, selective for the alpha adrenergic receptor. Now let's discuss the second part, which is the ethylene linkage. So for optimal activity, the amino group should be separated from the aromatic ring by two carbon atoms. So you guys look at atom uh, alpha and beta. So if you take a look. All structures you uh, hear that we have in the slide, um, you will find that always the aromatic ring is separated by two carbons. If you shorten uh, this linkage, or if you link, uh, make it longer, this will decrease the activity. The methyl or the ethyl substitution on the alpha carbon decreases the metabolism by the ammonoamine oxidase. All right. So if I'm going to do substitution on alpha off of this uh in this structure that you guys are looking at if uh we're going to substitute and add like a, a methyl or an ethyl it will decrease the metabolism by the ammonia amino oxidase. So look at the norepinephrine and the amphetamine for example and what is the difference between them? There is a substitution on the amphetamine. And that's why uh, that's why the monoamine oxidase is not going to work as good on the amphetamine compared to the norepinephrine, right? Now, when it comes to the beta hydroxyl group, this is uh, produces chirality. So, for epinephrine and norepinephrine and related compounds, the more potent enantiomer has the R configuration, which is uh, shown in the slide. Uh, and this basically what makes it the R configuration if you guys look at the OH. So let's discuss the third part. The, the amino group or the green ring, is, this is going to be important for the direct adrenergic agonist activity. Uh, primary and secondary amines are more potent as compared to the tertiary and the, uh, the quaternary. So the nature of the uh, amino substituents affects the receptor selectivity of the uh, of the compounds. Now, in general, as the bulk of nitrogen uh, substituent increases, it decreases the alpha uh, receptor agonist activity and increases the beta receptor agonist activity. Okay, so increases the alpha, uh, decreases the alpha and increases the beta. As the bulk further increases, increases the beta 2 selectivity. Okay, so the more the bulk here it is, it's better for uh, beta. And between beta 1 and beta 2, it's more beta 2 the bulkier it gets. Now you can see that the, uh, the NT, uh, the NT putyl group increases beta 2 selectivity. Uh, and to, uh, terpubutylene and the salputamol, uh, which is this group right here. Okay, this is called the N C butyl. So large substitutions on the amino group decreases the metabolism by the ammonoamine oxidase. So if you look at the uh, norepinephrine, the amino group is not protected, so it will get easily metabolized by the aminoamine oxidase. Versus if you want to compare it to the salputamol and the terpetylene, for example. That's why the norepinephrine have shorter duration of action, if you want to compare it to the terpetylene and the salputamol.